stroke, kidney disease, and loss of vision. These are just a few medical problems that can stem from diabetes. I'm Kristen Perfetio. Coming up on Health Minute, presented by Hallmark Health, we're gonna take a closer look at this disease and how some small changes can make a major impact on your risk for type 2 diabetes. I'm here with Dr. Bindia Tucker, an endocrinologist at the Diabetes and Endocrine Department at Melrose Wakefield Hospital, and we're going to talk about diabetes today. Sure. Dr. Tucker, thanks so much for joining us. Doctor, what is diabetes? So sugar is an essential nutrient in the body, and it is used as fuel. But when this sugar rises above a normal range, patients develop diabetes. Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is when your body makes no insulin, so the sugar rises really high, and it's diagnosed very early in life. Type 2, on the other hand, which is what we're going to talk about today, is diagnosed late in life, and you do make some insulin, but you may not make enough. How does someone develop type 2 diabetes? What are the triggers for it? What, what causes it? So there are certain people we know are at a higher risk of developing diabetes. Overweight, obese patients, patients with sedentary lifestyle, strong family history if you have lots of uncles, aunts, uh, parents who have type 2 diabetes. Uh, often we forget women who had diabetes when they were pregnant called gestational diabetes. And we also know certain races like African American or Latino population develop type 2 diabetes more, much more than any other races. So, and, and now let's say a patient does come to you, it's determined that they do have diabetes, how would you treat that patient? So there are three essential components of treatment. Mm -hmm. One of the most simple ones is diet, a healthy diet, enough vegetables, enough protein in your diet. And I always tell my patients to attend diabetes classes earlier on. So as soon as you get diagnosed, you want to make sure you're getting the right education. The second component is exercise. Um, everybody knows American Diabetes Association recommends 30 to 60 minutes of exercise at least five times a week, but many a times the doctors don't tell the patient that the biggest benefit comes from doing nothing to doing something. So I tell my patients, take the stairs, walk to the mall, whatever little you can do. Mm -hmm. And then in majority of the cases, these two things may not be enough because as I said, you may not be making enough insulin mm -hmm. and then your doctor decides if you need either pills or injections. When the blood sugars, despite the treatment, are persistently staying above 200 to 50, they're too high. And you need to call your doctor. You may want to adjust the medications of the insulin you're taking. Is it safe to say that some very small changes in your lifestyle can make a big impact? Absolutely. And the earlier you start, the better it is. Okay. Dr. Tucker, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, we appreciate pleasure. it. <laughs>